Number 24. What is the resistance of a 20 meter long piece of 12 gauge copper wire having a 2.053 millimeter in diameter? All right. So uh, first thing I want to talk about is um, what's the basic idea behind uh, resistance All right, in a wire? Well, it actually turns out that it is basically similar uh, via analogy to the flow of water. Okay, let's say through a particular tube. So you remember when you studied fluids, right, you learn that the wider, meaning the larger this cross section becomes, the less resistance there is, right, of the fluid flowing through. Why is that the case? Well, because there's less than friction occurring on the peripheral surface when compared to the total volume that's flowing through the tube, okay? So that's one idea. So it's basically going to be the same idea. It's a little different, but it's the same kind of analogy. And the second uh, thing that will influence the resistance here is going to be the length then of the wire itself. Just like the length of the hose that the water is flowing through, right, increases the resistance. Why? Because it has it has more opportunity for friction to occur, right? There's friction all along, blah, 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 blah. Same idea here. There's going to be essentially, quote unquote, more friction as it works its way uh, on through the wire. So the longer the wire gets, the more uh, resistance there should be. And the third thing that will influence the resistance is then going to be the nature of the material itself. All right. That is that uh, comprises the wire. So if it's copper or if it's going to be, let's say, silver or whatever other metal um, that metal itself will influence on the nature of the conductivity. Uh, the reason being is because obviously copper atoms are not the same as silver atoms, and therefore they're going to pack differently to form that solid. And they're going to be arranged a little differently, spaced a little differently, so on and so forth. So that is the third thin thing that will influence the resistance. So we realize now here there's going to be three things. One is the cross-sectional area. Cross-sectional area. The second thing is going to be the length of the wire. And then the third thing is going to be the nature of the material that comprises the wire. So we have a nice little formula. We say that the resistance in a wire is going to be equal to this constant called resistivity. Now, the resistivity, you shouldn't really say it's constant because it actually depends upon the material, right? This is the resistivity. Every material has a different resistivity. And the resistivity of the materials can actually change depending upon its temperature. So, um, yeah, I guess it's anything but constant. So don't think of it as a constant number. It's not like the speed of light or anything like that. But just know that this value here, the resistivity, will be unique to the particular material that you're talking about. Multiplied then by the length of the wire, divided then by the cross-sectional area. Now, if you notice, just mathematically, if the length increases of the wire, what happens to the resistance? Well, it's a direct relationship, and therefore the resistance goes up. That's just what we explained. If the area, cross-sectional area of the wire goes, let's say, down, meaning it gets smaller, what happens to the resistance in the wire? It goes up. And that's what we were explaining before. It's an inverse relationship. And then, same thing here, the resistivity of the material, this is a direct relationship. So, you know, if that goes up, then the resistance will also go up. All right? So basically now all we have to do here is plug in the values. So what material are we dealing with? We're dealing with copper, right? And somehow I got rid of all the highlights at the top. So what is the resistance of a 12 meter long piece of 12 gauge copper having 2.053 millimeters diameter? So uh, by the way, the 12 gauge, that just tells you the thickness essentially, but you know, you're not going to have to memorize any of that. The 12 gauge copper correlates with having a diameter of 2.053 uh, millimeters. So we know we're dealing with copper. What is the resistivity of copper? I copied it down here at the bottom for you. Right, it's going to be 1.72 times 10 to the minus 8. Notice the units here are going to be ohms meter, but who cares? I'm going to leave them out. Those are the standard units, so don't worry about it. The length, you know it has to be in meters. All right, how long is the piece? Well, it told us that this piece of wire here is going to be 20 meters in length. Great, so I plug in my 20. And then the cross-sectional area. What does the cross-section look like to you here? 
That looks like a circle to me. I mean, it might look like an oval, right? Technically, it looks like an oval. However, though, I'm trying to do my best and uh, uh, kind of give you a three-dimensional look on a two-dimensional paper. So just trust me, it has to be cir- it'll be circular, okay? So you know that the area, then, of a circle is going to be pi r squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in pi r squared, but now I need to know the radius of this thing. Well, they told us the diameter. Oh, that's easy peasy, right? So all we have to do now is take that diameter, which was 2.053, and divide it by 2, right? That will equal then the radius. But notice this is in millimeters. We need it in meters. So just take that value then and multiply it by 10 to the minus 3, all right? Look at how easy that is. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get rid of this radius down there, and I'm going to plug in 2.053 over 2 times 10 to the minus 3, and then I'm going to square that whole thing. Now, you do not have to plug that all into your formula like that. You can calculate that separately, and then just plug in the number. It doesn't matter. So 1.72 times 10 to the minus 8th, multiplied then by 20, divided then by pi times parenthesis 2.053, divided by 2 times 10 raised to the minus 3, and that whole thing is then squared. And we're going to get a value here of about the resistance is roughly 0 0.104. And that's in ohms. All right, guys. Thank you very much for tuning in. I do hope this helps. And if it did, just give us a little hand by hitting that subscribe button, liking the video, and telling your friends. We appreciate it. Take care.